Mr. Pradeep Gurwani, uh, who is the pioneer in the field of beer sector in India. He has launched many multinational beer companies in India, and now he owns his uh, a pint room, uh, which oh. is kind of a, a pioneering effort done by Mr. Pradeep Gurwani. Welcome, Pradeep. Thank you. Thank you for that nice introduction and your kind words. Thank you. And how has been this lockdown treating you so far? This is uh, uh, this is one uh, one to the line. I, you know, I, mean, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, you know, yeah, it's a tough time. It's a tough time. I know. So. Um, yeah. You are the pioneer in, in the bears. You have started this uh, beer in, in a cafe style in India, and uh, which model has been followed by a couple of other people in the country. So, uh, and how has been your journey so far? How many years it has been, and how your journey so far as, as a beer entrepreneur? Yeah. So. Um... Yeah, so uh, we uh, so we set up uh, uh, so uh, we originally set up something uh, which is which is doing really well called the Beer Cafe, uh, fifty percent owner and partner in that. So we opened in uh, December two thousand and ten. The first one opened in Ambience Mall in uh, in Vasant Kunj in Delhi. I think um, the journey so far. I mean, for a concept of beer cafes, pint rooms have actually been really quite interesting. I think we really hit the nail on its head when we realized that. People are actually looking for a space for conversations over beer. Uh, people want to go out. They want a casual environment. They don't want to go to a bar at all times when you know which are which are loud and noisy and one can't talk. So I think you know the uh, for the, the feedback for us and the last ten years now it's 2020. Uh, we clearly have a market for people who want to go out, who want to have conversations, and they want to do it in a very relaxed manner. And I think that's really where. Where the pine tree really fits in here. Yeah. So, uh, um, because you uh, must be dealing one-to-one uh, -one with many customers who come to your uh, uh, cafe, to bar, and uh, what has been your feedback? What are the beer they look forward to have? Because now they have a lot of choices. And I, I, I heard that you have what 50, 60 kind of styles of beer in your in pine tree. So, which kind, which kind of styles generally? Is popular among the consumers. So when we uh, when we opened up in in uh, in 2010, I think a lot of people uh, told me that hey Pradeep, you know uh, who, who's going to be drinking an expensive beer, an imported beer for 450 rupees when you can get uh, when you can get a locally brewed beer for about 100 150 rupees here. But I said it's it's turned out to be surprise. I think people are now willing. To try new tastes, people are willing to experiment, and I'm seeing this, you know, across categories. About, you know, about, about four or five years ago, how many people would be willing to try a sushi? I mean, today people are willing to try a sushi. Uh, people are willing to try types of single malt. People are willing to try different types of vodka rather than the standard sort of vodka. Uh, so I think that's been a big change that I've seen really happening. So people are willing. They're ex they're, they're experimentative. Uh, they come into the pint room and each time they come in, they say, hey, you know, what are the new beers that you have? And they want to hear about the beers and they want to try some of these beers. There. So it's it's quite good to see people trying out different styles, asking about different styles, and then willing to listen to my team and myself talking to them about these different beers. There. So uh, are you happy with the domestic beer producers? Are they able to cope up with the expectations of uh, new millennial beer consumers who want working for the new beer styles i think if i if i have to actually break that up uh, so i say okay you've got uh, you've got a couple of the large uh, large players the top three players i think they've largely remained focused on on their own commercial mass market brews they've remained largely focused in the stronger segment now they're willing to look at what the millennials want but i think a couple of other players who were who were startups have actually sort of you know hit the nail on its head as far as the opportunity is concerned. They realize that there is an opportunity and people are looking at beers other than the standard lagers. And they've actually done a pretty good job in opening up the market. And I think today 
you know, I mean, if, if I look at a market like like Delhi, there are, you know, at least at least 30, 40 such brands that are coming from these startups. Uh. Can you name a few of them which you think that done a really good job, especially the domestic uh, beer producers? So, I mean, I think um, uh, I think White Rhino has, uh, uh, has, has has done a very good job. Uh, White Rhino is focused really, really, really hard on, on quality. Uh, they have a fantastic lager, very good wheat beer, and they've also launched an IP in which is only available in Gurgaon. So I think they've really focused really well on quality and delivering that. Uh, Katipatang is, uh, is 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 another fantastic player. Uh, they chose to be differentiated in their in their approach. They have a different brand name. Uh, they had the guts to launch an amber ale, and I think that's really uh, really uh, really done well. So to me, from a uh, from a quality and brand perspective, I'm you know I'm sort of using quality plus brand, I think these two companies have really sort of in Delhi made a mark for themselves there. Uh, there are a whole host of other uh, uh, other players who have done well, but I think these two have actually been differentiated, uh, they're focused, they've been very strategic there. Okay. So, uh, so, this lockdown has affected virtually all sectors of economy in India. Uh, how do you describe this? How the lockdown has affected, especially businesses like yours, because you don't do you don't have a large operations. You have a small operations, and uh, so how is affected you and yeah? Yes, yeah, so it, it's it's been uh, it, it's been it's been really tough. I mean, I think we were. Uh, you know, uh, bars bars are probably in the place that have been uh, the most affected. We were the first affected. In fact, on March 19th evening, we received a circular asking us to shut down. So we were shut down even before the official shutdown happened on March 25th. So March 19th, we were shut down. And uh, from what I hear that, you know, we are probably going to be one of the last places to open up. Yet. So, uh, so complete lockdown. Uh, we can't open up in other parts of the world from what I understand. They're allowed to do online delivery from other parts of the world. They're allowed to do takeaways. Uh, that is, uh, you know, and, 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 and home delivery. So at least there is some business coming in. Uh, there is some support coming in from the government. Here in our case, we have paid our license fee in advance, right? We've paid our license fee in, in advance, and then, you know, we're not operating it. So, so it's, it's, it's really tough financial times for us. Uh, you know, so we are figuring out what to do next year. Has any, any demand been raised by association of, of restaurants, bars, owners association to the government that in such a difficult time, some kind of concession, some kind of financial support, some kinds of concession from the excise department to extend it to you so that you people can stay afloat? So, I mean, I think the, uh, the, uh, uh, the National Restaurant Association of India and a couple of other bodies have made various representations to, uh, uh, to the government of India. Uh, asking for various concessions, including, you know, I mean, I, if I if, if I look at, I don't know why we're, you know, we're the only sector singled out. We are the only sector which does not get input credit on GST, which is which is shocking, right? We are the only sector for which we have paid license fees, and then if you're not allowed to operate, right, then shouldn't rightfully those license license fees be refunded back? Yeah, you know, forget about other other benefits, but GST. Uh, is is something that is the input credit is credit to everybody, and I'm saying license fees. I mean, if you're not operating, and then why should the license fee be paid? These two basics should be taken care of, in addition to some of the other other support mechanisms which the industry has asked for. But I, you know, I mean, but there's completely at this moment of time, uh, we're seen as a sin industry. We are seen as a non-essential industry, despite the fact that we create so many jobs. We pay significant amount of revenue and taxes to the to the government and uh, and, and employ a large number of people, but still at this moment of time there is no news on on any support there. So, did any any legal uh, option available to you to to knock the, the laws of the courts to give you if suppose the state the government doesn't offer you the concession because as you rightly said that you have paid the license fee but you're not able to operate. This is the time the license the amount of the portion of the money you have paid for these two, three, four, five months. I don't know how long this will go on. Will this not be kind of a uh, extension given to you that this, yeah, whenever they open up, this license fee would be valid for the next four, five, next four, five months? 
so I mean, I think at this moment of time, with everything shut down, it's 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 very it's it's very difficult to get uh, uh, to meet people uh, and to get uh, to get an opinion on this. But I think it's definitely something to 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 look at. I think the government. So this is a very fair request that one is putting across the one is. So if, if I'm running a grocery store, I do not necessarily need a license. I just need a health state license. I don't need to get a license. If I'm running a salon, I don't have to have a license. If I if if I if I'm running a gym, I don't need to pay license fees to a particular authority. Here in 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 the bar trade, we are paying huge amount of license fees, and then if you're not allowed to operate, I think it's only fair that the licenses license fees should be refunded back. That will then help us at least in our cash flow, right? I mean, if they, if they defer it, then the money remains locked. But if it's refunded back, you know, it's our own money. Uh, we haven't used the license for two months. Logically, to me, if it's reported back, it then helps us from a cash flow perspective also. Give some, give our readers some idea about how much is the license fee for a bar like yours. Is a bar, is it license fee? Is is uh, depends on the capacity, seating capacity of, of the bar or what? So give us some idea, about the, so that we can understand how much the financial burden is coming to you every month. Sure. So, uh, so this varies from uh, this varies from state to state. Uh, in a, in a, in a state like Delhi, where we have uh, where we have the fine room, uh, the license the bar license fee is linked to the number of seats there. Uh, so we are we are under fifty seat under fifty seater restaurant. So for a fifty seater restaurant, the license fee works out to approximately just under ten lakhs uh, for the whole year. Uh, so that's so so approximately uh, approximately eighty eighty thousand rupees a month uh, is is what we pay for uh, for this license fee. Then uh, then then about up about hundred seats. There's a Higher license fee, and uh, and and about two hundred again another higher license fee. In the case of in the state of Haryana, uh, license fees are around fifteen lakhs per year. So so these are these are huge uh, huge sums of money for for, uh, for for restaurants, particularly when there is no GST uh, input also. Mm -hmm. Correct, but input normally liquor liquor industry, as I I understand, the GST. Uh, is only uh, accrued on the ingredients used by liquor industry. So you're not using any ingredients to manufacture any liquor. So in what in what in what form a restaurant or a bar can get the GST uh, refund uh, compensation uh, benefits? So I mean, uh, for, uh, for 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 a bar, the biggest component of cost is rental, right? On mm -hmm. rental, the GST applicable is eighteen percent, right? That's a huge amount. On the rental, I'm okay. Percent, right? I mean, and 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 uh, GST accounts for at least twenty-five to forty percent of most bars' revenues. There, so that's a big saving that is possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, has such a one been raised to uh, to GST uh, councils by by the restaurant owners? Yes, this has uh, this has been raised at, uh, at at numerous forums. I said we were the only industry which was singled out for this in, in November two thousand and seventeen, uh, when uh, when Arjun Jaitley was the finance minister. At that moment of time, I don't know for whatever reason, we were the only industry which was singled out for uh, for this uh, draconian measure. Yeah. And it's affected everybody's cost by eighteen percent. Yeah. Right, rent is a huge component. And earlier, I was getting uh, I was getting a GST input on that. And I could therefore offset this eighteen percent, but now my everybody's costs have gone up by eighteen percent. When in the last two or three years the market has been tough, so it's been it's been a it's been a double whammy. So market has been tough, and the costs have gone up eighteen percent straight away. And now, of course, COVID nineteen is a completely new situation here. So, Pradeep, tell me, uh, what's your future outlook? You don't know when this lockdown would open. So, how, how do you when do you think this? Situation will bounce back to normal, and all the businesses, especially the hospitality business, will start running as normal. Because people will have a lot of fear. Even if the restaurant and bar open, people are going to have human contact in the service sector. They will be literally very petrified to go out and have dinner or have drink something. So, uh, because the world has never seen such situation like this, what's your outlook about? Uh, so outlook is is uh, is quite bleak, you know. I to me the way I, the way I see it is 2020 is going to be a complete washout for this industry. Uh, you know, we're already uh, we're already sitting at the 
at the end of April. Uh, uh, I, you know, so even, uh, you know, I, I suspect we will probably be one of the last uh, places to be opened up uh, uh, you know, after this lockdown because of social distancing. And then, as you rightly said, uh, people will have the fear about going out almost immediately. Bars, bars by nature is about social interaction, right? And unfortunately, our, uh, unfortunately, the situation uh, COVID-19 is about social distancing. Yeah? So therefore, I, I, I suspect bars are going to be uh, in, in a really bad shape, even if they open up, uh, you know, and, and I don't think things will come back to normal before the end of 2020. Yeah? I'd be really surprised. Yeah. yeah, let's hope so, that everything bounces back to normal. So during this lockdown, Pradeep, so Cross, fingers what, crossed. Yeah, what new skill you have learned from your wife? Have you learned to cook something in the kitchen or what? <laughs> yes. So, uh, so been uh, so so this period of lockdown has actually been interesting. I'm I'm sort of you know working on a couple of a uh, uh, couple of new new things that I'm sort of uh, uh, working on. So one, of course, is uh, is is focusing on my own health. Uh, so. Exercises is, um, is is something that that I've been focusing on. Uh, I've uh, uh, I've taken up a, a course on trying to learn French as a, as a language. Uh, then uh, then then in terms of cooking, uh, yes, I mean a little bit of experiments here and there. Uh, wife's wife's largely been doing most of the cooking, but a little bit of experiments with food and a uh, lot of stuff around the house. A lot of stuff around the house. So I hope the pine room boss has his. Enough stock of beers at home to keep him chilled out when the time he wants to relax with some beers. And let's hope to catch up with you when the time really the bars open and the pine room is again start functioning. And thank you very much, Deep. And uh, thank you for coming on the Spirit Studio. Thank you so much, Bishan. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, uh, stay safe, be safe. Uh, to to all all all, all spirits viewers and, uh, and 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 to the spirits team yeah thank you thank you very much thank you for